ready to do flight crew ftc flight team stand up the entire history of the nfl hey man i feel like it's perfect time to learn up some you know what i'm saying amazing more knowledge of you know the national football league with super bowl right around the corner pro bowl weekend january feeling sunny we about to get this money did you know the Check it out. used to look like this uh, the field used to be this small, or the players didn't use helmets. Much has That's changed wild. throughout the years. So, how did we get here? Well, it all started back in 1892, when the sport was stolen. Bro. England made up this crazy game called... Bro, 1892 just doesn't even sound like a real year, dog. Like... <sighs> rugby, using this field and this ball. So, Americans just took everything and called it football. The only difference Damn. was they made football extremely deadly. Because while they both didn't wear any helmets or pads, instead of tackling, football players would fist fight, bite each other's ears off. Or... No, I wasn't expecting that. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was not expecting that, bro. Nah, niggas was different back in this time period, bro. <laughs> bro, no, 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 bro. Let me find out back in these days, bro. Everybody had a Hall of Fame threat badge. Matter of fact, you'll be out the ordinary if you had a silver Hall of Fame. Biting somebody's ear off, bro? Now we see where Mike Tyson got that from, bro. Now thinking about it, dog, what? Or even gouge each other's eyes out. It was so bad. I mean, NFL players, look, you still do that. The dirty ones. But, bro, like, biting somebody's what? By 1906, over a hundred people had died from playing football, and thousands of others became disabled. But in 1920, football became a game instead of a crime, when a player named Jim Thorpe formed the first ever pro football. Oh, I heard about him through Madden Ultimate Team. Yo, he looks like he's nice, yo. Um, I forgot what his rating is usually in Madden. What, like 90? And finally introduced some rules which stopped players from dying so much. They got some shoulder pads and leather helmets, told everyone to stop fist fighting, and legalized passing the ball. So now that things were official, they decided they to name the They could have the ball? They were abusing runs back in the day? Calling it the American Professional Football Association, or APFA. Yeah, that name was Booty. So two years later, they changed it, and in 1922, world was finally blessed with the NFL. Now, there's 14 chapters in the NFL's history, and next up we got 1922, an era where the league was terrible. There was no Super Bowl, no game schedule. I mean, uh, teams would literally play whenever they want. And really? when it comes to players, the pay was so bad, it wasn't a full-time gig. So the league was filled with milkmen and coal miners in jerseys. And let's Damn. just say that you were a fan that could look past all of that. Were you really going to support the Columbus Panhandles? The Moline Universal... Bro, hey, why does that name sound kind of fire, though? They need to bring some of these OG names back to the... You know what they, they call it, like the expansion league? Were you really gonna I ain't gonna lie, that sounds kind of fire. Columbus Pan... Wait, what is that even exactly supposed to necessarily mean? Because I do know the actual word of what they call it, panhandling, is actually something bad and illegal. But if they didn't mean it in that type of term like that, um, yeah, that I ain't gonna lie. That is, it looks like the Redskins, like old, like... Or the Columbus Pan... Wait, wait, where's Columbus at? Isn't that in England? And handles the Moline Universe... The Moline Universal Track. I don't understand that one. So tractors or whatever the hell this is. What is that? Providence uh, Steamrollers? That doesn't even sound bad, but the logo. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Bro, that logo is hilarious. Is that supposed to be a human dog? Yeah, those were a human werewolf or a human coyote. Which one? For real NFL teams, it was impossible to be a fan, and the NFL knew it too, because the league just wasn't growing over the next 20 years. Bro, can you imagine this old NFL? Like, they need to re-retro some of these logos or something, bro. Like, some of these actually genuinely look fire. The Brooklyn Lions, they were called the Lions back in the day. Can't the Akron Indians... Los Angeles Buccaneers, bro. That doesn't even sound right, dog. Versus like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers nowadays. What made them change? That's crazy. If you think about it, like both like LA and like Tampa is like close to like a water. So it's kind of necessarily won't necessarily like, not make sense because like when you think about water and you see the logo Buccaneers, it doesn't that like come from like pirates or something like that, I believe, or... If I'm not mistaken, so it's like close to water, so it wouldn't be too far off. That just sounds crazy weird, though, that now it's like the L.A. Rams or something like that, or Chargers, whatever they call it. 
um, uh, versus like this now. Then you had the Milwaukee badge. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. Out of all these, the Milwaukee badges looks the cleanest, bro. They need to re-retro some of these stuff, dog. The yellow jacket Frankfurt's. Where's Frankfurt at? The Dolith Eskimos. Is that like Alaska? Because Alaska like has like like cold stuff Eskimos. That kind of looks kind of fire too. Some of these they should have kept. I ain't even gonna lie. These is fire. Like, bro, if there was a, something that actual Milwaukee's badge or cyber jersey, I'd cop something like that. Bro, I have like a couple of fits I can rock with those. What is this? The the Maroons Pottsville? Um, I can't really hear, read that. Things only got worse. I mean, 14 different teams went bankrupt, and those that did survive had to take out loans to pay their players. Plus, the NFL wasn't even the best Damn. football league. College football was literally 20 times more popular. It really? was looking like the beginning of the end. But in 1949, the NFL came up with a genius solution, implementing three key changes that no other league had at the time. They added set game schedules, started televising games, and to help with reducing injuries, the NFL introduced plastic helmets. The inventor sure has faith in his helmet, for he's going to try it out himself. And now watch him take it, right on the old beam. Yeah, along with some new teams like the Colts, Browns, and 49ers. And all these changes worked because the 1958 NFL Championship had become the most watched sporting event in TV history. See, the two biggest teams in the league, the New York Giants and Baltimore Colts, were facing off. And after going back and forth all game, the two teams went into the first ever sudden bro, death. If I play back in these days, bro, I'm averaging 250 yards a game, bro. No bull. Put me anywhere on the field, receiver, running back. I'm getting 250 plus, bro. Nigga, what the f Overtime. So everyone and their mom tuned in. I'm talking 45 million people. Literally nine times Damn. more than the year before. And after the Colts took on the so W, it the became day. forever nicknamed <laughs> the greatest game ever played. Really? In the 1960s. Bro, for the fucking, we gotta, we gotta look at like a 1940 like NFL highlight game or an NBA like full game highlight, bro, type ish, bro, one of these days. A rival league was formed called the AFL, which introduced teams like the Texans, Chargers, Bills, Raiders, and Patriots. And their owners were way more rich and way more greedy. So they were trying to take the NFL down by any means necessary, like stealing their players nabbing their TV contracts. They even paid players so much that the NFL couldn't afford to stay in business. Damn. So the NFL had no choice but to play dirty back by stealing the AFL star players like Pete Gogolak. But after seven years of back and forth, it became clear nobody was winning. So to avoid bankruptcy, the two decided to merge and become one league called the NFL. Again. Now, we've got nine more chapters about the NFL's history coming up. And that's not all. We'll talk about the future, too. Because the NFL will be implementing artificial intelligence that predicts plays before they even happen. And the league wants to replace refs with AI. Yeah, the NFL's changing a lot. Yeah, but if you want to make a change, too, you should check out today's sponsor. Oh, Better boy. Help. Listen, we all know therapy is important. <laughs> yourself or have Victor Astor and most the therapy gym and slash rebound in a Manage to get a special discount deal for you guys, all right? 10% off your first month. Again, that's betterhelp.com slash rebound for 10% off your first Now, in 1972, one of the most controversial moments in NFL history would happen. During the final play of a 1972 AFC playoff game, the Steelers quarterback threw the ball. It bounced off a player's helmet. And not only that, it somehow fell into another player's hands. And the Steelers scored the game-winning touchdown. Oh. This play was so incredible. It became forever known as the Immaculate Reception. But uh, here's the problem. Back then, once the ball left a quarterback's hands, an offensive player could not catch a pass that had been touched by another offensive player, unless a defensive player had touched the ball. But when you watch the tape back, it's impossible to tell if a defensive player ever actually touched the ball. So this instantly sparked Nah, out. number 31 definitely touched that. Tell if a defensive player ever actually touched the ball. Bro, are you kidding me? The number I seen that the second look at it, bro. I just have naturally good eyes. So this number thirty one definitely touched it and hit him at the same time. You could clearly see it go off his chest. If he wasn't nowhere there, the ball would have bounced forward instead of backwards. How you gotta think about it like Newton's law of motion. There's no way a football in that velocity is coming that fast, pause, and it just automatically just shoots back like that.
You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just saying. Outrage, with Raiders players and fans saying that that catch should not have counted. When a guy crosses a goal line, it's either a touchdown or it's not. They didn't call a touchdown. They didn't know if it was a touchdown. I went out. They said, get away. We don't know what happened. So now <laughs> the referee leaves that huddle, and he goes over to the dugout on the Pittsburgh Steelers side, and he gets on the phone. And he makes a call to someone. And then he hangs up. Then he walks out into the middle field and says, touchdown. Five or ten minutes later. We were in a locker room. John came in and just said, guys, we got screwed. They call it the immaculate reception. I call it the immaculate deception. Yeah, and it's still being debated to this day. The rest of the decade, though, was all about domination. Because the Steelers became a dynasty, winning three Super Bowls in four years, with nine wow. Hall of Fame players on their team. It was unthinkable, but they weren't alone, because the Dallas Cowboys won two Super Bowls, and were actually so good, Wait, they became the no Cowboys have a Super Bowl winning their record? <laughs> Bro, they ain't, you mean to tell me they ain't win a Super Bowl since 1940, bro? There's America's team, <laughs> but nobody won like the Miami Patriots Dolphins. Patriots can't relate. Because to this day, they're the only team in NFL history to have completed a perfect record season, going 17-0. That's it. It's over. Let's go, Nick. That's right, man. However, in 1980, the NFL was forced to prepare for its funeral. See, over the last decade, there were three separate plane crashes carrying sports teams from the Marshall University football team I heard about to the that University of Evansville and the United States boxing team, all resulting in the deaths of 191 people. Oh my Good evening, gosh. a charter jet carrying the Marshall University football R. team R. home everybody. to West Virginia crashed last night as it tried to land at the Huntington Airport. All 75 persons aboard were killed. Oh it was the gosh. worst plane crash in the United States so far this year. This shook the sports world and what? made the NFL completely change their views on safety. So they cooked up all kinds of guidelines, like the disaster draft, where if a team suffers a tragedy, the league will host an emergency draft to replace their players. But the NFL wanted to improve safety on the field too. So they implemented stricter rules on contact to the head, neck, and face making sure the chances of disaster were slim to none, which is exactly what the league needed. Wow. In 1985, the 49ers drafted the greatest wide receiver of all time, a man who still holds the most receiving yards in NFL history and has the most touchdowns of all time, the one and only Jerry Rice. Randy Moss Why, better! Because he teamed up with legendary quarterback Joe Montana, and together, those Tom two Brady's dominated better. the rest of the 80s, winning two Super Bowls together. These dudes were NFL stars, but by the 90s, an unlikely star would come around to steal the spotlight. Michael the Jackson. Super Bowl was the most popular thing on TV, pulling in an average 80 million viewers per year. But there was a problem. The halftime show sucked. And they knew that if they wanted to increase their viewership, they had to get their act together, do something that would get everyone talking about the Super Bowl. So they called up the biggest star in the world, Michael Jackson. And he put on the performance of a lifetime, with viewership exploding to an insane 133 million. Fireworks, hurricane machines, and the moonwalker himself formed the centerpiece Damn, of the highest rated that, television man. broadcast of all time. This was the moment that halftime shows became the must-see event of the year. I mean, uh, people would tune in just to see the halftime show, and that's still the case to this day. It was June 12, 1994. Everyone was just going about their day when news broke that the ex-wife of one of the NFL's biggest stars, O.J. Simpson, was stabbed to death. People were shocked and started to question if O.J. had anything to do with it. But just a couple of days after the murder, every TV station was hit with a breaking news alert saying, O.J. Simpson vanishes after being charged for a crime his fans never dreamed he could commit. Unbelievably, the most watched, most wondered about man in America has gone missing tonight. He apparently disappeared from under the noses of his lawyers and doctors this afternoon. Dodged an arranged uh, surrender and vanished into the Los Angeles haze. There is nothing like this in memory. Nothing. I understand we, we're going to go to a live picture in Los Angeles. Okay. Police believe he was oh, in that yeah. vehicle. Police radio is saying that Simpson, the passenger in the car, has a gun at his head. This was insane. 
Like, just imagine a player today like Tom Brady going on the run for murder. It was unlike anything the world had ever seen. Bro, so, one's word, this dude was an NFL superstar having five stars in real life, bro. Got around. Over 95 million people tuned in to watch OJ speed down the LA highway as he narrowly missed hitting civilians on the road. Highway Patrol. Yeah, um, I think I just saw OJ Simpson on the uh, 5 freeway. And we, and we like, look at it, you know? Uh -huh. And he like, stopped and looked at us like he was dead. And finally, after a 45 minute chase, OJ surrendered. But the case was far from over, because as OJ went to trial, he argued that he had nothing to do with the murders, the evidence had been mishandled, and that the cops had been racist against him. But despite his pleas, all signs pointed to OJ being guilty. Hell, the entire public knew it. Like, why would you run from the police like that if you're innocent? But in the end, one crucial piece of evidence saved OJ's life. Item number nine, the Rockingham blood. Sir, at this time, the people would ask that Mr. Russ Simpson stepped forward and try on the, the uh, glove recovered at Bundy as well as the glove recovered at Rocky. Yes. All right. Thank you, Captain. It makes no sense. It doesn't fit. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder. Yeah, and he had all charges dropped against him. To this day, though, people still think OJ really did it. And to be honest, it's because of things like this. Just did you do it? <laughs> no, I didn't. After we finished filming, OJ said to me that uh, he had a surprise for me, and I genuinely was surprised. I think it was his idea of a joke. Bro, no, this bro, bro, no, 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 that shit is not fucking funny, bro, but dog, no, bro, bro, yo, nah, man, this man's wild, bro, yo, dog. Do you have a joke? No, this is no way that is real, bro. <clears throat> Now, I've heard about, like, that O.J. Simpson case, but I never looked at any of the stuff behind the scenes. And, honestly, most of the stuff that Rebound is showing right now is, like, all new to me. But, dog, that, that last little clip there, that was outrageous, bro. That was outrageous. moment really marked the beginning of the NFL players going off the deep end. Because the rest of the 90s were just as unhinged. Ray Carruth hired a hitman to shoot his girlfriend. Alonzo Spellman threatened to kill himself with a landline telephone, all because his doctor was late to his appointment. And Cecil Collins was arrested for breaking into a woman's house to watch her sleep. Just... What? 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 That is a creep. What? Stood there and watched. Bro, that, yo, some of that shit now, while drunk. crime ruled the 90s, cash ruled the 2000s. Between merchandise, TV deals, and sponsorships, business was booming. The NFL was now worth $12 billion, and players wanted their piece of the bag, too. So to keep their stars happy, the NFL was forced to pay up big time, which had Brett Favre now making $47 million for seven years. Randy Moss up Randy there. Randy Moss was making Randy $66 Moss! million for eight years. Well deserved. Now, even safeties like Lawyer Malloy were making $35 million for seven years. NFL players were getting f*** you money. But in 2001, uh. Drew Bledsoe smashed all the records because he was considered the best quarterback in the league. And the Patriots Sheesh. wanted to make sure their star was taken care of. So they offered a record-breaking $103 million contract for 10 years. But by 2001, all of that money went to waste because immediately after, Drew suffered a collapsed lung That's and was sidelined for the entire season. The Patriots were the favorite to win it all that season. And now they were missing their star quarterback and had to rely on their backup. A guy with no experience was the 199th pick in the draft. You saw this tall, gangly-looking kid. Looked like having ever seen a weight room. 
ran a 5-2 something, one of the slowest quarterbacks in the combine. Yeah, I run faster than Tom that, but Brady Tom Brady's the number one quarterback, quarterback all time, no! So taken out, Tom Brady, the second year quarterback from the University of Michigan, who uh, threw only three passes in his rookie year last year, one for three, a six yard completion, and this is his first duty of 2001. So apparently Bledsoe knocked around a little more than it appeared, and uh, Brady, in charge against five defensive backs. This man First came in throw. and instantly became a star, right. leading the team to a Super Bowl and winning it all that season. Brady quickly became the face of the Patriots, and soon after, the entire NFL. Yeah, if it wasn't for Drew's injury, Tom Brady might have never happened. It's crazy to think about it, bro. Oh, my God. By Vick. 2003, there was another quarterback who was dominating the field, a man that could move like a running back, throw bombs like Tom Brady, and that defense is dropping to their knees. I'm talking about Michael Vick. See, for the first time ever, the league saw a quarterback that could beat you with no help and could run into the end zone at any moment. Before Michael Vick, quarterbacks were mostly handing off or throwing the ball, but now you had to worry about a quarterback being a damn running back. And the style of play paved the way for future dual threats, like Lamar Jackson, Cam Newton, and Russell Wilson. At this point, the NFL was in its prime, but something happened in 2004 the scarred NFL fans for life. It was the Super Bowl 38 halftime show. Over 144 million people watching live. You had little kids to grandparents all huddled around their TV. And they were all excited to see two of the biggest stars in the world perform. Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake. So, when they finally took the stage, the world shook. But during the final minutes of their epic performance, Justin was supposed to rip off a part of Janet's costume to reveal another layer of her outfit. But instead, she had a wardrobe malfunction. Oh, I heard about that. And this went down as the legendary nipple gate. Was it planned? No, it was not. Well, well, what people don't understand is he was to take and rip the piece off that he did. The letter piece. Right, but more came off than what was supposed to. Now, over the next three years, the only exciting thing that happened was Peyton Manning having his glow up, winning his second MVP, and taking home his first ring. And also, the NFL decided to ban touchdown celebrations. One of the dumbest decisions the NFL's ever That's made. Wild. But in 2007, shit really hit the fan. Patriots. The entire team's reputation was ruined. See, it was the first week of the season, and the Patriots were destroying the Jets. Able to go long for Moss. Randy Moss. First touchdown as a Patriot. It seemed like the Patriots somehow knew every one of the Jets' moves. And that's because they did. Because it turned out they were spying on the Jets, it's using fake. hidden cameras. You know, it, that, all that stuff is all fake. Everybody knows that. Real Patriot fan here. Patriots aren't cheaters. When the NFL knows. launched an investigation, it found out the Pats have been creeping on not only the Jets, but the entire league for almost eight years. Yeah, doing it was a bunch of damn cheaters. Cap. So the NFL fined their ass 250 grand and made them give up their 2008 first round pick. But despite getting caught and having a target on their back, nothing could stop the Patriots. Because that same season, they went on to dominate the league. I mean, they managed to put together the greatest team the NFL had ever seen. They had guys like Randy Moss, hey, Lawrence Randy Maloney, Moss, that. Vince Wilf. By the way, that's how you know I'm a real NFL. You know what I'm saying? Real NFL knowledge right season, here. They went on to dominate. I mean, they managed to put together the greatest team the NFL had ever seen. They got guys like the dance Randy right Moss. here. That was Randy Moss' dance when he had that 22nd and 23rd touchdown to break that receiver record. Us, Lawrence Maroney, the Vince Wilfork, and Sammy Morris all teamed up with Tom Brady. And together, they went 16 and up. All they had to do was win the Super Bowl, and they would have completed a perfect season. So, going into the big game, it seemed like a lock for the Patriots. And with a minute left, with the Patriots up, the Don't remind me about this, man. Go undefeated. It makes me tear up every the time. Giants made the greatest catch in NFL history. Don't replay it, man. Don't replay it, man. He's on his feet. Airs it out down the field. It is caught by Tyree. Oh my God. David Tyree, this man. Thrown and Tyree just goes up for it like a basketball player. Harrison trying to knock it down. And Eli, man, I don't know how he got out of there. I thought he was on the ground. And, and then he came out of the pile. And 
just slings it. Ellis Hobbs then gets burnt on that. Let's Plaxico get the touchdown. The Giants have won the and Super Bowl. Fun for Brady and the Patriots. Why the hell, looking back at it, why was Ellis Hobbs fucking five, four and a half self pressing Plaxico, bro? Why were you pressing? Bro, you should just back up, man. So this was the worst moment of their lives. Keep in mind, though, he was only 30 years old. So he knew he would return next year better than ever. Well, that is if he wasn't killed. Don't say that. Cause in 2009, the Saints were caught trying to kill quarterbacks. See, oh, the after bounty the playoffs, scandal. The Vikings filed a complaint to the NFL, accusing the Saints of purposely trying to injure them. So the league launched an investigation to the Saints and discovered something sinister. Today, our partners at Yahoo Sports uncovered a recording and on it, a New Orleans coach graphically telling players to inflict injuries in a big playoff game. Tied to the top. Got a lot of guys up to the top. Kill the head, the body will die. Kill the head, the body will die. We've got everything in the world to make sure we kill Frank Gore's head. Bro. We want him running sideways. We want his head sideways. Oh, no, nah, that just sounds crazy. I remember when this came out. I was in like probably eighth or ninth grade or some shit like that, bro. And it was it was crazy because like it was a big thing, but I didn't look too much in depth about it because also one that was not my team, so I didn't really care too much about it. But dog, bro, hey, I hope Frank Gore ran down on that coach, bro. Whoever was behind this audio, bro. The Saints were giving players bonuses for tearing ACLs, hitting guys with existing injuries, and even paying them. Now, th now that I think about it, that's why I will never forget, bro, when that damn bum-ass bitch fucking Bernard Pollard tore Tom Brady's knee, bro. He was known for doing some stuff like that, like diving towards the knees, bro. Like, you remember that damn situation, bro, when uh, Tom Brady got his ACL, MCL torn, and then Matt Castle had to come back? Um, and, and he replaced Tom Brady that season following after that. I think it was after the Super Bowl year we lost or the year after that or whatever, bro. But, dog, yeah, bro, I, that, that, that whole bounty stuff, that's a weird thing. And crazy enough to think about it, bro, there was probably, like, all that stuff was probably going back in the days of, like, the early NFLs, like the 60s, 70s, and 80s and shit like that. Um, but they just didn't, like, get caught or whatever. 35 or grand to try and permanently something. injure the Vikings quarterback. Weird, but bro. But the end, the Saints got hit the hearts. Because four of their players were suspended for a total of 31 games. Damn. And two of their coaches were suspended for the entire season. Lame. Lame ass. Over the next few years, we saw some of the most ridiculous moments in NFL history. Marshawn Lynch had a touchdown that was so crazy. All the fans cheering caused a 2.0 magnitude earthquake. Brett Favre sent nudes to a Jets employee and got fined 50 grand. And a snowstorm caused the Vikings' whole stadium to collapse, causing 18.3 million in damages. Wow. It was ridiculous. But the most now, ridiculous thing the was how the NFL almost ruined the league for a season. See, the refs felt like they were overworked and underpaid. So they went on strike, saying the NFL was a bunch of cheap asses, and they weren't going to work until they got a fair deal. But the NFL responded by laughing in their face and hiring the worst replacements imaginable. No you had refs that had only ever refed in a high school game, and even some that had only refed in a lingerie football league. Nah, yeah, that's crazy, those were the guys bro. now refing in the NFL, and it went about as horribly as you'd expect. They were out there blowing calls and completely ruining games, Yo, Bill Belichick, like the right field mayor, where at the last second, the Seahawks won on a catch that should not have counted, and fans lit up the NFL, starting the hashtag, things better than replacement refs, and even started boycotting the NFL entirely. Hell, even Obama tweeted about it. Thankfully, though, that nightmare only lasted about three weeks, as the NFL finally made a deal with their refs, giving them a major increase in salary and benefits. And afterwards, the commissioner even apologized to the fans. Uh, starting with our fans, and we're sorry to have to bring our fans through that. We're sorry to bring uh, the general public through that. But in the rest of the decade, had some of the most legendary moments in NFL history, like crazy. OBJ's all-time catch, the Packers' miracle in Motown, and the Seahawks throwing away the Super Bowl at the one-yard line. Yeah, that one hurts. There's one moment, though, that'll be remembered for all the wrong reasons. The biggest cheating scandal in sports history. See, during the 2015 playoffs, the New England Patriots were taking on the Colts when Tom Brady threw a pass that got intercepted. But instead of celebrating, the 
the Colts were pissed because the football felt deflated. So they took the ball over to the sideline and showed the ref. And what happened next shocked the entire football world. It's the latest NFL scandal, and it's dominating the airwaves. Deflate gate. Deflate gate. Deflate bro, gate see, from the see how much they be hating on the Patriots, bro? We're just automatic GOAT status forever, bro. All these damn cheating. So like, stop it, bro. You're doing something. This, this is probably the most ridiculous scandal of, of them yet. I remember this back in the day, too. Like, bro, you have all those NFL balls out there, bro. That's the ref's job to check that at the end of the day, bro. That's the ref's job to check that. It's the same thing with the NBA, the MLB. Everybody checks the whole game ball before the game is actually started, bro. Come on, Shows man. to talk radio. Instead of talking about the Super Bowl, all eyes are on the ball. <laughs> this ball. The NFL found that 11 of the past 12 balls were illegally underinflated, and the pass immediately got put on blast, getting called cheaters again by angry fans and having every <laughs> sports show on TV trash their name. They were even accusing Tom Brady of being the ringleader because, well, he was the one throwing the balls. And the NFL found some pretty sus texts between Brady and a couple of Patriots employees, talking about air pumps and needles, blowing up balls. One of the dudes even called himself the deflated. So after a year long investigation, the NFL put their deflated balls right in the Patriots mouth. So spending Tom Brady for four games, taking two first round BS. picks, BS. and finding the team a million dollars. But it still wasn't enough to ruin Tom Brady's career. Because that season, he made the greatest comeback in NFL history. Right. See, after dealing with the suspension to start the year, Tom brought the Pats all the way to the Super Bowl. And despite being down 28-3 to with only 15 minutes left in the game, they somehow came back and won it all. Amazing, after this, bro. Tom Brady became the undisputed GOAT, the greatest player in NFL history. And it's not even a debate. Now, between 2017 and 2020, the NFL had its craziest time period ever. The Browns lost every single game for almost two years straight. Aaron Hernandez went off the deep end. Pat's owner Robert Kraft was busted out of rub and tug. Colin Kaepernick kneeled for the national anthem. Gronk broke the Super Bowl trophy. Saints fans tried to sue the NFL. And Tom Brady went to the Buccaneers and won his seventh ring at 42 years old. Crazy. Yeah, man. things got pretty ridiculous. But now, we gotta talk about the most ridiculous player in NFL history. The dude that's known for jumping into goalposts, nuts first, twerking after touchdowns, and even arriving to practice in a hot air balloon. I'm talking about Antonio Brown. And in 2022, the NFL saw him lose his damn mind, because he literally retired in the middle of a game. Odd situation. Antonio Brown boiled over, very upset on the sideline, took off his shoulder pads. Mike Evans, OJ Howard, trying to convince him to keep them on. Obviously, they were unable to do so. He tossed his shoulder pads, tripped off his shirt and glove, threw those into the crowd, then ran across the field while the teams were still on the field, giving the crowd a peace out sign. I'll let you know when we hear something official on his status. Thank you, Jenny. Maybe an Antonio Brown <laughs> in Tampa Bay. Yeah, that was bro, actually the last time we ever right saw here, AD in the NFL. And since then, the game has had some huge changes. Tom Brady retired, the Raiders moved to Las Vegas, and stars like Patrick Mahomes are earning bags we've never seen, making a ridiculous $503 million for a 10-year contract. That is Amazing. half a billion for throwing a damn ball. Well, look, where the game is headed is even crazy. Because recently, the NFL dropped a documentary exposing their plans to implement artificial intelligence into football, where they announced that fans will know exactly what play a team's going to run. Because AI is going to start showing plays before they even happen. We can do the same type of thing with next-gen stats. We can overlay player routes and understand the play before it even happens. Yeah, and that's not it. Cause pretty soon, players won't be able to do anything without a camera on them. Cause the NFL is gonna let fans track them using AI software. Hell, they even wanna put mics on every single player so fans can pick between who they wanna hear. Also, there's even been discussions of replacing refs entirely with AI. This is the future of the NFL. And Man. keep in mind, we're only a couple of years into AI. So in five or 10 years, the game's gonna look a whole lot different. Man. The minute I start seeing robots in the NFL, I am done watching football. <laughs> but hey, man, amazing video about Rebound, man. I like the uh, how Rebound has like the football side and everything too. Hey, man, let me know if you want to see more football videos on the Rebound side, man.